A virtual workshop tour, Landis River Woodcraft in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. A woodworker by the name of Rich Reagan is going to join us. Now, Rich uh, makes some beautiful, beautiful uh, keepsake boxes, and he has an Etsy store, and he's just uh, very, very talented. I'm, I may be buying one of those puppies here pretty soon. So this is another one of our virtual tours. As you know, we did one recently uh, with James Finger, Fix-It Fingers out of Sydney, Australia. We've done a few others as well, particularly one with Mike Newitt, and people seem to like these, so I guess I'll continue trying to do them for a while. So again, yeah, what we're gonna do now is switch uh, using a uh, program called Ecamm Live, which I'm an affiliate for if you happen to see the link at the very bottom. And if you want to do some live streaming or whatever, Ecamm Live, if you would buy it through my link, uh, that'd be very appreciated. So without further ado, let's switch virtually to Lancaster, Pennsylvania and bring on Rich Reagan of Landis River Woodcraft. Hello, Rich out there in Pennsylvania. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Paul, as always. I told you guys all about Rich in the intro, so we'll let him just kind of uh, take the floor here and do what he wants to do. Rich, it's all yours. I sure am glad to, to visit with you all, and um, I've enjoyed uh, the small workshop guy for well over a year now, and uh, He's a very innovative guy, and he's not the old coot he thinks he is. I envy him, even though I'm 72. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera here. So I have a, here in Pennsylvania, I have what's called a daylight basement. And it's the lower level of my house, which is a ranch-style house. And uh, I have a little man cave. It has a full bathroom where we have guests. And uh, we also have a small bedroom down here. And um, this is the, the entrance, the outside, is, which is why we call it a daylight basement. So I come downstairs from our, up, our upper floor or come in the back door if I'm bringing in products and I enter my shop here in this room. So uh, that little slanted line you see is the stairway going down to upstairs. So once in a while, I forget myself and hit my head, but it's not too bad. <laughs> so um, my shop is 18 and a half by 13 and a half, which equates to about 250 square feet. So you're 25% larger than everything. I am. Oh, okay. And uh, everything I have is on wheels. And um, you can see there to the right is my jointer, which is a York Craft jointer. It looks like every Every other joiner in the world. It just says something different. I got my ply board on the left side, and um, as we walk in, you can see my. Um, I have a rack. It's a Bora lumber rack. Uh, I think I, I saw that uh, from a guy on YouTube. Have a Delta uh, dust extractor, which works quite well. I use that primarily for my table saw and also for my router on the edge of the table saw. And, uh, of course, like everybody else, my table saw is the center of my shop. It's a jet super saw. I bought it uh, about 12 years ago. So it, uh, the reason they call it a super saw is it has a, a joiner, uh, I'm sorry, a router table built in. And it used to have a setting table there on the right-hand side, but I took that off because it really wasn't functional, and they don't make it anymore anyway. And then um, um, I have my outfeed table, which is a table that I built that table. And the, one of the first YouTube videos I saw a couple of years ago was from April Wilkerson. And oh, yeah. uh, she has this table where it just goes up and down. I have it down most of the time. And it also serves as another work table. I do a lot of glue up on that. So, um, then we just continue around. I don't have a lot on my walls uh, because it's such a limited space. But uh, like you, Paul, I'm a I'm a big micro jig fan, so I have my micro jig stuff there. And um, 
Of course, I use the MJ splitter on my table saw. And one of the things I haven't done yet is I haven't built a, a sled, but this little device, which I found on Amazon, I find very, very effective. It does what I need to have it do. Only thing it doesn't have, which is why I need to build a table saw, is if I have an extra wide board that I'm cross-cutting, I run out of the T-slot. So that'll be one of my next projects. Yeah, even with a sled, we tend to run out of room for really wide ones. And a lot of times, the sled won't handle a wide one anyway. So you got to go to the miter gauge like you've got anyway. So, all right. Yeah, you're right. So uh, the jet, I'm very happy with. It's a one and a half horsepower, and uh, I can cut through two, three inch uh, solid wood. And I use uh, mostly I use um, walnut, uh, mahogany, and uh, maple. Right now, mahogany is are is the wood that is selling the best. And um, oh, just a chop saw like everybody else. And then of course I have my pocket screw jig. I use that quite a bit. I think that's a great tool. And then some of my uh, micro jib clamps, my uh, box templates, you can see they're up against the wall. And here's something that if uh, you woodworkers haven't gotten it yet, it's the dust deputy. And um, so I, I don't have a central dust collection system. I use a little shop vac. And I got so tired of emptying that thing. Um, I got online and I saw a guy oh, uh, on uh, YouTube. OYO 56, and he had this uh, dust deputy, and he built a plywood case for it, and I put that on, and I'll tell you what, this is one of the best, best additions to my shop. I uh, I hardly ever, well, first of all, nothing gets into my little shop vac, and uh, this thing is much easier to wheel around, and I use it for my um, chop saw. And then I also use it for my six-inch Rikon belt sander. Uh, that belt sander is a real workhorse. And uh, the kind of boxes I make you can hear, this is a Whoa. walnut dovetail keepsake box. Look at this. And this was a this was, this was a custom build for one of my customers. And uh, she wanted it's a memorial box for one of her associates that's retiring. Served on the inside, so uh, I put that in there. But anyway, I I do a lot of dovetail work. In fact, I do a great deal of dovetail work, and uh, I use the Keller system. I don't know if you've ever seen the Keller system dovetail jig system. I have. But not. I bought that about uh, 10, 12 years ago, and I tell you, it, it just makes dovetailing perfect and. I'll zoom in here. You can see that these dovetails are perfect. And uh, the amount of boxes that I make annually, I, I just don't have time to hand cut them. But I'll tell you what, I don't believe anybody could look at my dovetails and see that they're not hand cut. A little bit. So I want people to know that you are making a lot of these beautiful boxes. And you have an Etsy store, which is called uh, Landis River Woodcraft. I've got it up on the screen there. Right. And uh, so that's primarily a lot of what you're doing. And, and uh, how has Etsy worked out for you? Well, i tell you how I got on Etsy. I'm semi-retired, 72 years old. I, uh, I worked at New Holland Church Furniture in New Holland, Pennsylvania for 28 years as the marketing director and city manager. And, of course, uh, we sell church furniture all over the United States and Canada the Caribbean, South America, and so forth. And uh, that's where a lot of the sawdust got in my blood. Actually, it got in my blood when I was a kid. But I really built my shop in 2005 when I worked at New Holland. And then I retired last uh, at the end of December of 2020. And I teach at uh, two different Bible colleges locally. I'm an adjunct professor. And uh, I was building these boxes in my neighbor across the street. He said, Rich, you ought to put those boxes on Etsy. And I said, what's that? So I got on Etsy with my first box in June of 2020. I sold my first one in um, July into Norway, actually, and have now shipped them everywhere. It was a learning curve. I tell you, if you have any shop hobby that you would like to sell, it's handmade. I can't say enough good about Etsy.
Uh, they take care of everything. They take care of sales tax, shipping. It doesn't cost you anything until you sell something. And you can go on the Etsy site and find out what that is. So, yes, Paul, Etsy has been a very good source of part-time income for me. Yeah, so for people to know, the Etsy is just your entire platform, and I have an Etsy store as well, and, and I've mine's even more interesting, and I, I don't need to build anything. I'm selling, I'm selling digital plans, and so somebody just goes in there and orders them. They're for my, uh, what I call my saw stallions and my pop-up workbench, and I do, I do nothing other than uh, notice that I got a deposit into my bank account. Uh, so they're your credit card processing uh, firm. I'm just telling people that they handle the credit card processing and, and I think they take a very reasonable fee. And uh, so it's a way that if you've got something that you can produce kind of rapidly and have good value for it, then take a look at the Etsy. It's, it's easier than you might think to set up an Etsy store. It's really not that complicated and it's pretty cool. And there's lots of people on it. Those boxes would take me forever if I was truly hand cutting those dovetails. So that jig or that device that you've used is the secret, right? Yep. It's called the Keller system. And um, you can find it online at kellerdovetail.com, invented by David Miller a bunch of years ago. And... Uh, uh, it makes you look like a professional dovetail cutter after you get through the learning curve, which is not very difficult. And you just use a router. They they provide the two uh, dovetail jigs, and uh, they get he uh, provides you with a it's a it's a dovetail bit, but it's his own invention. And he also has a bit for the tail, the, the tails, which is also uh, his own invention and. Um, it's a it's a great system for dovetail making, uh, and you know I, I know there's a lot of people out there that make hand cut dovetails, and I don't I think that's great, but when you make two or three or four of these boxes a week, fifty two weeks out of the year, you just don't have time to do it. Yeah, no, no way. Uh, all right, we'll put a link to that uh, product uh, or jig or dovetail cutter uh, in the description if I can remember, and. Uh, I like those little things I see there. They're called match fit dovetail clamps. I've got about eight oh, different. Yeah. I've got about eight or nine different jigs in my shop that use those, and I'm going to do a video in the near future demonstrating all eight or nine of those jigs. So those are those are uh, for me. They're about forty-two dollars a pair, so they're not inexpensive. Obviously, you only need three or four if you want to share them. I get kind of lazy, so I buy, you know, eight or ten of them, and then I can keep them on different jigs without moving them around. Um, the one thing I found out, Rich, and yeah, I don't know I, if you have, when you're, trying to, when, you're, when you're trying to use those, you want them to slide in those grooves. And I found out that if I put any kind of polyurethane on a jig, they won't slide. So... Uh, that's right. I, I think the best thing to do is either maybe just boiled linseed oil mixture, 50-50, and or something like a, a Watco Danish oil, and then they slide really, really well. Yeah, I learned that from you, Paul. That oh, boiled okay. linseed oil works very well. Uh, Paul, right. you're a thing. Not what to use. All right. And Any I have other? A, uh, a very interesting thing here that I just Oh, I, I like that. There's a, there's I your... have a very uh, This is a bench vise, actually, using the micro jig system. And uh, I got that from uh, Jesse over at uh, Penalty Box Woodshop on yeah. Utah, U YouTube. And uh, it's a fantastic way to put up a bench vise. Yeah. So, combination of... Um, YouTubers and uh, micro jig products. All right. And then here, here's Paul. Here's something that I, you said uh, you would like to talk about my favorite power tools. Well, these aren't really power tools, but the Keller system and uh, in addition to my table saw. And uh, this um, 
This is called Dalmax. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but this um, this little Dalmax has changed, literally changed the way that I do joinery. I had a biscuit joiner, and I never could get that quite accurate. Uh, maybe I'm just not as good at it as some people. And I always thought doweling was a difficult process and really, really wasn't a very strong joint. So um, I was watching Vic on Down Under Woodworks, and he demonstrated this dowel And I'll tell you something. In my opinion, this is one of the finest pieces in my shop, Paul. It's, uh, it's well-engineered, well-designed. And here's the thing. Um, they have a test on their website, and their test shows that it's 200 times stronger than biscuits. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, 200 times stronger than mortise and tenon, and uh, about 600 times stronger than biscuits. So I'm not selling it. They don't sponsor me, of course. I just think it's a for a, for a beginner woodworker um, – with a minimal investment and a router uh, and a drill press, uh, I'm sorry, a hand drill, you can make some great joinery. And for example, all my boxes uh, on the tops are two pieces of wood on the top joined together, and they gotta last a lifetime. So the Dalmax makes it perfectly easy. And the interesting thing about this little Dalmax tool, Paul, is that uh, if you use it properly, when the two boards are boards are joined together, they are absolutely flush. Okay. One of my other products is a small chest, and I use uh, two four-inch boards glued around um, the fronts and sides. And uh, so with the Dalmax, it makes it so much simpler. I was going to buy a Supermax uh, drum sander because I was doing all this sending, and this Dalmax has eliminated that. So that's <laughs> one of my favorite tools also, Paul. Do you remember how much it costs? Yeah, it's $265. And when you pay the $265, I think it's $265, they send you a, uh, a drill bit and a spacer, and they send you the whole kit, and they send you some dovetails. I now have the quarter-inch uh, adapter and also the 5 16th inch adapter. All so right. it's dowmax.com. You can find out all about it. And then here's uh, here's something I just got not long ago. Doing all of my own finishing now, and uh, I have the Earlix uh, 5500 sprayer. And um, I was getting a commercial shop to do all my spraying, and um, the problem was uh, they were using um, uh, VOCs for the finish. And a lot of people, when you close these boxes up and you ship them. And they're closed up for a few days when you open them up. And uh, if you use conversion varnish or something like that, it just blows you away with the VOCs. And VOCs are a no-no in California anyway. So yeah. I, I picked up this Earlex sprayer and uh, aqua coat for my polyurethane water base. And in 24 hours, it dries hard as a rock. So that's a... That's one of my newest innovation, and uh, it saves me money, and it saves me time, and the finishes are just gorgeous. I use the drill press a lot, and um, so it's just like any other drill press. That was actually one of the first tools I bought. Uh, my wife bought it for me for Christmas. It was a rigid, and I bought a Ryobi table saw, and, of course, um, I traded that in rather quickly, and uh, so those were the first tool, first tool, two tools I purchased. Right. And I have um, I have a Delta um, bandsaw that I, I don't use a bandsaw very much for the kind of work I do. And then one of my favorite things here is my um, uh, thickness planer, and that's a Makita, and I'm very happy with that. I couldn't be any happier with it. If everything under rollers, I have my sanding station and supplies under there. And I think one of my favorite things in my shop is this uh, this workbench. When I first opened my shop, I wanted something that was versatile, that I could move around and I could store things with, but also use it for an assembly table in my limited space. So I found this in one of the magazines. It's not my design. I keep my drill stuff there, 
and um, I keep my all, all my router equipment down here in that. And of course, it has three drawers for storage. And then over here, I have um, my finishing equipment, small tools, including all the tools that Paul Carlson told me to buy. <laughs> I see and, your uh, uh, graph gear, yeah, graph gear 1000. <laughs> yep. I got my Porter Cable guys down there for pin nailing. And that, that probably is my favorite piece of the shop. It's so versatile, and uh, it's my home base. And then we continue on. That's my wall there. And uh, I have my bits, and uh, I got my Forstner bits, grinder, and some miscellaneous tools. That's where I keep my extra saw blades. I have a DeWalt um, uh, dado set, which I highly recommend, and then a variety of different clamps. And if you make a lot of boxes like I do, this 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 uh, clamp system was one of my best finds when I uh, make boxes and cabinets. And then over here is my the last part of my shop is my clamps, which I don't have enough of like everybody else. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's my that's my little. 50 square foot shop. A guy's castle in the basement of his home. A uh, lot of good yes, times are spent in there. And uh, do you think you'll get tired of, uh, I know you use a lot of different woods and you got different custom designs that people ask for, but uh, do you think you'll get tired of making those boxes? Uh, does that, Making those and keeping up with your orders, does that keep you from doing any fun woodworking for yourself? Or Hi, Paul. Yes, it does. It does get tiring when you get four or five orders in a week. And um, if I make three or four boxes at a time, that equates to about three and a half hours per box. Um, if wow. I make one at a time, it's four hours. So, uh, so when you take, because I take a lot of pride. I use all rough lumber. I don't use box lumber. I put it especially lumber yards. And um, I buy only top grade lumber and top grade materials. And um, so starting about the end of October through the end of December, it gets crazy. It gets absolutely crazy. So here's what I did. I changed my delivery time, which was unbelievably short in the beginning. I changed my delivery time to two to three weeks. And if um, when I opened this shop by December of last year, my shop was running me. And so I quickly decided that I need to run my shop. And so I stretched out the delivery time. And if somebody orders something and I don't have time to get it in their time frame, I just message them and offer them a refund or the additional time. And I got to give a plug for people. People who buy from Etsy have been fantastic. The people all over the world. It's, I never dreamed that Etsy would be like a pen pal shop. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've made urns for people. I've made wedding boxes and shower boxes. And when you get a mother who lost a son, Oh, wow. And ask you to build something special for her remains. I can't explain. And that's why I do it. It's not about the money, although I, I cover my costs and I do make a profit. But what I've learned is it gives me a purpose that I never dreamed that I would have at this age of my life. Very cool. Very cool. It's nice to see there's more old coots, more old coots out there enjoying their retirement. All right. Well, that was uh, very, very interesting. I'm delighted to visit your shop. Let me uh, change my screen here. I got a little picture up of uh, my French fleet wall. It wasn't where I meant to go. Let me go to uh, the ending. So I would invite everybody to visit uh, Rich's Etsy store and take a look at the beautiful boxes that he has over there and the pricing and so forth. And also uh, visit uh, my store, Small Workshop Guy. And I really want to thank Rich for carving out the time to let us see his shop in Pennsylvania. 
please give us a like, a comment, and subscribe to my channel. I don't think Rich has a YouTube channel. Thank you very much for tuning in today, and stay safe in your workshop. So, uh, when Rich is through with his video, or...